Sing it with me now. Money, 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 mother... Rivian R1T. It's like capitalism and counterculture had a baby. And that baby has a hyphenated last name and a Roth IRA. The doctor frickin' slaps his butt and the first thing the baby says instead of crying is, uh, can you uh, pull up my positions, please? There is no better car than a Rivian to represent the performative virtue signaling environmentalism of people who care about the planet, but only when it means they can get a truck that literally kneels. What are you, from San Diego? My front bottom smells like sandalwood and nag chapara. I drive American, but I'm still about the movement. <laughs> mm. Even my stock portfolio is diverse. Okay. Um, I know we've been doing literary theory a lot, but just bear with me. You see... The Rivian is a pure embodiment of eroticism. I read that wrong. Although my Freudian slip is kind of on brand. Ecological literary criticism. It exists as a reaction to how people interact with nature. You could accuse all electric or hybrid vehicles of this. But the Rivian is distinct in how it encourages us to interact with nature even as it basically exists to disturb nature. Because Rivian wants you to know this isn't a sub that gets off on nature's satisfaction, but a car that doms from underneath, thrusting upward, harder, harder. I want to see your ass get rammed by that ceiling fan. I'm going to make an identity out of simping for Mother Earth. Oh, crush my ball sack while figuratively bending you over a kitchen counter by telling you off-roading is awesome. And it can be, but you're also gonna mess up root systems, cause erosion, and generally, mm, just screw with animal habits. At least that would be the eco-critical reading, because from an eco-critical perspective, the idea of the Rivian is at odds with its actual function. Rivian wants you to drive electric, but they also want you to take this truck to places where there's no electric infrastructure. They want you to view this as an EV, but with the casually domineering stance of a pickup truck. Our relationship to our environment is reflected in the literature we create. So if the Rivian is the literature in this equation, then it represents our love-hate relationship with that environment. We think enough of nature to want to try and do less damage to electric vehicles and other sustainable practices, but not enough to want to change how we live entirely. Because let's be real. Humans, by virtue of just being on the planet to begin with, screws with the environment. So what's an off-roader really going to do that's any worse than a bunch of bulldozers clearing out forests, right? But in eco-criticism, there's also this idea that the more materialistic we become, the less we care about the environment. The Rivian tries to resist this notion by using materials like vegan leather for upholstery and recycled microfiber headliners. It's an expensive collection of creature comforts with heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, the five camera gear guard security system, and all the peace of mind features of any modern car like electronic stability, traction control, highway assist, auto high beams, lane keep departure, e-brake, adaptive cruise control, plus six row front and two side curtain airbags, a bunch of other other stuff, really good at capitalism and the body's burning or right night tree and we come around here and we got to go we all on all wheels and goes really fast and Satan is my lord and I'll worship the devil. The bodies are buried in day or The bodies are buried in day Help me, my mind stops thinking. Help me, my mind stops Help thinking. Help me, my mind will not stop thinking. This is really good build quality in here. Every seam is perfect. Every stitch is perfect. They cared about the interior of this truck. And the outdoor body panels line up. It's like this truck was made by engineers and not... A meme lord who bought his way into the scientific community. The Rivian comes with a quad motor drive. One motor for each wheel. For a vehicle that's around 7,000 pounds, it grunts off the line like a Corvette. This thing is eerily fast. 
Make way, make way. We there it is. <laughs> oh, I want to misbehave. I want to be that guy. Oh, yeah. My even with my little Nairo, I've gotten way more aggressive with passing people. Everybody else is going too slow. Kapow. I like how it's not touchy with the uh, with the way it accelerates. The Kia, or excuse me, the Hyundai Ionic 5. And thank you. And the the Volvo Pulsar 2. Pul Speaking of bold statements and bold claims, I want to go around this truck. I will go around it now. We. You can. This is a flat corner. You can. You can do this at night. I swear. <laughs> I'm very conscious that the tires are knobby. They're not, but they don't. They don't howl when you get. I haven't found the edge of yeah. traction. Because I haven't found that. Yeah. Sort of sound yeah. when you're turning too fast on tall tires. Yeah. Rivian's promotional copy says this. Four motors deliver instant power and independently adjust torque at each wheel for precise traction control in all conditions. And I'm glad it's there because I'm driving this like a sports car and these are all-terrain tires. That computer better figure this out because these are not really street tires on this. Yes, I know they're DOT, but that's a lot of knobbies going on down there. The idea is that, okay, each wheel has its own motor, so you get instant torque vectoring. It can counter understeer and oversteer, and there was already a video of one of these things going up the rock faces at Moab. Rivian wants you to go on adventures, which means driving this up onto Mother Nature with a group of friends who always find a way to center themselves when discussing any national tragedy. The Rivian sits on a skateboard platform, which to me is kind of like rewording what a ladder chassis is. So all the necessary components like the battery, suspension, braking, all that stuff are laid out parallel to the ground, and that skateboard platform can fit a wide variety of body styles. Sounds like a ladder chassis to me. The C10 trucks come to mind. Feel free to add a Yo Mama joke here. I'm not saying to add your own Yo Mama joke here, I'm just saying to read that so people can infer the joke on their own, since it's easy to imagine what the joke would be, and we don't want to spell things out. I know you'll nail it. Thanks, Brian. The two front motors deliver 415 horsepower and 413 pound-feet of torque, while the rear motors deliver 420 horsepower and 490 pound-feet of torque. So altogether, this truck makes 835 horsepower and 908 pound-feet of torque with a 0 to 60 time of 3.2 seconds. I think this is the fastest accelerating truck on the market. Your fuel economy is listed at 70 mpge. I think in gasoline terms, this thing makes 74 miles per gallon city and 66 miles per gallon highway. In EV terms, you will consume 48 kilowatts per 100 miles. Well, what's the range? Well, have it, owning an electric vehicle myself, I can say it depends. Rivian says 314 miles at 100%, but that's not counting into wind resistance, temperature, traffic, how much you're using the heater or air conditioner whether you're charging anything in the car, it varies. I wholeheartedly encourage anybody who has an electric car or is planning to buy an electric car to download the PlugShare app. That's an open source. It's fun in that it's kind of like Reddit. There's a lot of people trash talking whether uh, EV chargers are good or not. And a user supported app updates faster than whatever computer in here is gonna tell you where the chargers are. Rivian was the first company to market an electric pickup truck that wasn't based on any pre-existing ICE model. It's the capstone on a company that started 14 years ago with the name Mainstream Motors before becoming Avera Motors. And finally, Rivian. As glowing profiles would tell it, founder RJ Scaringe wanted to make cars that you didn't have to feel guilty about because the amount of harm cars were doing to the environment bummed him out. 
That sounds very glowing, but I doubt the desire for profits above all else in a very Ferengi way is the real reason. And why shouldn't it be? After all, we have an electric truck here with his initials in the tread pattern. No judgment, if we could get away with an RCR edition car, it would probably be like a turbo LeBaron with a bucket hat symbol in the tread pattern. And frankly, it's hard to be even mad about this when it's a truck as good as it is. I mean, it won Motor Trend's truck of the year on its first try, which is more impressive because the R1T is literally Rivian's first project. And I remember I saw this thing, a pre-production model, at the New York International Auto Show sometime in the before times, like I think it was like 2018 or something like that. And I looked at it and go, huh, well, we'll see if it actually comes to market. And I walked away. It was almost like an afterthought when I saw it for the first time. I am aware of all the user interface problems and these things going wonky when you do take them off road. The reliability of these Rivians are, well, it's a... Uh, it's, it's, it's not uniform, is that, that's what I'm saying. But people who bought them like them. Kind of has a like first album syndrome. You have your whole life to get your first album right. The mark of true greatness is the follow-up. For now, Rivian is trying to build their own non-Tesla EV infrastructure in the United States with something they're calling the Adventure Network, which is about 3,500 level 3 chargers across North America. I hope they do it. And I hope they put them in out-of-the-way places like Tioga County or most of West Virginia. Places where you can't get charging. Places where there's mountains and there's state parks. Places you would take a truck but wouldn't dream of taking an electric one because there's nothing out there. It's supposed to be up and running by the end of 2023. But looking at the map on their website, most of them seem to be confined to Colorado, California and Tennessee, because Nashville is there. Nashville. It's like the Los Angeles of the Appalachians. And these aren't universal chargers either. From what we could find, they're only going to work on Rivians, which is dumb. That's a, that's a cash grab if there ever was one. You're just pulling another Tesla, only now there's an R on it. With options on the adventure package, the window sticker put this around 83500 now, that was pre-2022 pricing, but you get a larger battery, a reinforced underbody shield, and the aforementioned quad motor all-wheel drive. But depending on where you're looking and how much you really want to spend, you can go well north of $110,000. Which tells me this isn't the type of truck you get when you actually need a truck. This feels like the type of truck you get when you're zooted off on your own farts. When you already have two other trucks for all your truck needs, and now you need your showing off truck. This is a type of truck for the guy who's happy to pay for his own blue check mark. This is a type of truck for someone who's flexible enough to blow themselves. They don't trust their orgasms to anything but their own mouth. Just put an ice cube in your mouth and head on down. It's just as good as your ex, but even better because you don't have to wait for your birthday. In an eco-critical way, this truck is... Walden by Henry David Thoreau. Walden. It's a great piece of writing, but I can't get past the fact that Henry David Thoreau really didn't live out in the woods. He just stayed there until his money ran out. And then he goes crying to his best friend, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and got another little bump. He comes walking up to his rich friend with his bimble sack and his hand out. Yeah, this truck is way better than Walden, but it feels every bit as pretentious. And you could argue whether that's fair or not. I mean, if you really want to walk the walk of sustainability, cars like this are going to get made, and we're going to have to start looking at them differently than as tokens of self-importance. Eventually, we're going to suck up all the crude oil. It's not going to be in this lifetime. It's not going to be in the next lifetime. I swear, every time I roll up an electric car, locals around me are saying, when do you think they're going to outlaw gasoline cars? You know, I heard in California that they're not going to, and in Europe, it's all over. What is this, it's all over talk? You got how many years left? 20? Well, it is all over for you. The rest of us are still going to keep driving gas cars until it becomes economically a seesaw act between electric and gasoline. Electric cars are coming down and gasoline prices will always go up and there will be a point where it levels out. As Quark proved, you can even solve war with economics. 
My point is we're getting started on figuring out how to make electric cars now with the technology we have. It's better to have a plan B than no plan at all. So we're going to have to stop judging people as pretentious for paying to own a nice truck like this that saves money on fuel and makes their commutes comfortable. And for an upstart to make a truck like this and to have it generate a profit for them, that's another thing. Rivian is making a profit. The other big T isn't. Oh, I think they made it one year, right? Well, anyway. So for now, Rivian is going to charge a price that seems excessive. But ultimately, every step is a step toward making EVs standardized to the average consumer. So within that foundation of eco-criticism, the Rivian is a step in the right direction. And far less problematic than a lot of products you could go after, if you were looking for a dragon to slay. Acceptance of EVs just relies on people, consumers to accept, and drivers to be innocuous. I saw a Rivian go by the other day in real life, this was around Redding, and he had his horsepower numbers as his vanity license plate. Ugh. I think acceptance with uh, electric vehicles will go away when the creative, very uppity, snarky, self-sucking vanity plates go away. I remember someone with a Nissan Leaf around here get those vinyl stickers, those vinyl leather stickers, and just put it on the back of his car. And it just said electric vehicle. Really? The Leaf. It was a Gen 1 Leaf, too. Ultimately, you're not as pretentious just because you drive a Rivian, but maybe don't blast Dream Theater while you're rolling through a residential area. One of the things I've never noticed, like, Rivians to me have always been in the background or, like, passing me or something. And I've only ever seen them with the headlight halos and what I didn't know is that there's quad projectors yeah. inside. The low beams are on the top, the high beams are on the bottom. Are these LEDs mm -hmm. all around? Yeah. Okay. They're not projectors. And triple fogs? Because these are your turn signals you know, as well. Thought, when looking at this, this looks like a cornering light, but it doesn't come on when I put mm. signals. But yeah. I think it just bounces a lot of light this way. Huh. So what were you saying about the tires before? Uh, RJ, this, the CEO's initials are right here. RJ Scarringe. Ah, fancy. That's how you know when you made it when Pirelli's putting your initials in the tread pattern. Yeah. So we have cameras here, camera here, here. This is a projector for the Rivian logo onto the floor. Okay. Um, over the bed. Remember camera over the bed. And the oh, okay. and, back. and back of the front bumper? Fender. Fender, got that one. Now, how many times does it say Rivian? Starting here. One, two, three inside the bed, four, we're not counting the logo, five, um, six, seven, and on the wheels. eight, on the wheels, Yellow. nine, 10, 11, 12 times. Coming inside, we're at 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 19. Twenty. Twenty-one. Not counting digital, just print. Oh, uh, buttons on the... Copyrighted music! Uh, nothing. Are we counting the keys? Those are for the crossbars. Oh. All right, that's it. Do we want to count the rivet? Are these, is this an option? The crossbars, they're an option? Yeah. Okay, so optional, add another four. I watch Matt's off-road recovery and I've never seen 
any these things never work once really now maybe it's selective because of course they're only filming stuff that they have to pull out so in situations where these oh, things yeah. never work they would only go out to like the most extreme so yeah but no if you're just oh you know i've spinning tires let me just stick this under there yeah okay i drove an xterra for a little bit when i just got into the army and there were two instances on fort story mm -hmm. Virginia beach i got stuck i needed somebody to pull me and these would have really helped okay we've got another rivian twice <laughs> on the flashlight and this is standard equipment which i think brings the count to 21 or 22. oh it's a gradual it dims yeah it's absurd i can't imagine how much that costs yeah plus it's got one of the batteries for the, the main battery in there i do you think that's a gimmick it, you no, just it's say absolutely a gimmick, cause... yeah but it's... 1, lumens yeah i think i have all right, which is brighter, that or my work light? Oh, break, break, calipers. break calipers say it. So add four more. I forget what we're up to now. We must be 20, mid 20s. Mid -20s. All right. We got the Rivian flashlight on full brightness. Very scientific. Versus a dead battery. <laughs> Future Brian, charge your work light. That literally says work light. <laughs> um, heat and cooled seats. Yeah charging port for uh wireless charging for your phone it's here. it's it's the whole thing yeah i gotta take my case off though. will it bust through my case no it won't oh there it goes oh no it didn't it takes a second okay i remember i used to have a life proof case on it and that oh, that was this tough. is this is for my motorcycle it has the quad lock it's yeah too thick nice so this not being anchored here oh yeah that's another 14 inches yeah because if you had a load in here and if you didn't have this anything would just fall Ooh, it'd fall right down in there it'd fall everywhere so Oops, sorry hmm? but it also extends closed this is like a, not very deep four foot three and a half yeah um out to seven this is seven okay almost get my bike on because it has that that fender that stupid indian balanced fender oh front. so i can't drive it right up to the rubber because mm. the back tire would hang off just, uh. just there. i do wish there was some sort of grab here so yeah i have to hold like right here or the paint right yeah, that's going to be a thing with as Rivians get more popular, there's just going to be handprints. Like, rings or just shit, ooh, just rigid, shit didn't even think of that. Yeah, it's like every, you know, Kia Soul that has the finger marks on the bottom of the hatch because it's never washed. There is a hitch under here. I don't have a coin. Or maybe I can use it. No, that's not, that's too fat. But mm. that's just a quarter turn, and then this pops off to class five. It's 11,000 towing wow. pounds. Was there another YouTuber who did like a test with one of these things, towing something? That might have, or may, that may have been the Ford Lightning. Well, I saw uh, Motor Trend, or one of the big ones, they had this towing an F100 yeah. beat a new Lightning. Not, not the electric one, but the, not the Lightning. Raptor. Yeah. So this towing a, a 1960s Ford truck mm -hmm. on it with a, a very large trailer. Yeah. The truck had room around it. Yeah. It was faster than <laughs> uh, EcoBoost V6. Hell yeah. 